Hi, I'm Jason M, and I to read comic books. That's why in the week of September 10th, I decided to read all the Marvel Now comic books that were published in the world. I'm going to give each of these a buy it, borrow it from a friend, or a skip it rating, but before I get to that, don't forget to go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. And also, if you're a big fan of Jason Reed's comics, why don't you go to Patreon.com slash Jawin, and you can maybe get your name shouted out during the show. Now enough of this jibba jabba, let's get on to some comic books. Amazing Spider-Man number six. So Peter Parker is back in the driver's seat of his own body again, because Otto Octavius is no longer Spider-Man, and see, that has left Peter Parker with some problems. One, he has Parker Industries, a giant company that he owns, and he has no idea how to run. And how does he run it? Well, a lot of times he just wants to skip off and be Spider-Man instead of actually running his business. And that leads to a lot of problems, and also a very great scene where J. Jonah Jameson almost reveals Peter's uh, identity on camera. This is The Amazing Spider-Man at its best. Great art, great story, you should definitely buy this book. Avengers 34.1, a great one-and-done story about Hyperion's origin and how he is hunting himself for Kidnap Boy. Great art by David Keown. This is a definite buy. Avengers Undercover number 10. Take all the elements that make Avengers Arena work, mix them up, mash them up until they're not recognizable anymore, and that's what you got for this book. Skip it. Deadpool number 34. The artist tries to do his best Rob Liefeld impression in this book as it's just lines and bad feet all over the place. But this issue actually has a very touching scene between Sabretooth, Deadpool, and the hunt for a little girl. And it's actually kind of a little touching issue for a Deadpool issue where he's not acting like a Looney Tunes character. So this is a borrow from a friend. Death of Wolverine number two. I was initially against this event because it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's marketing. It's just like, oh, we're going to kill off this character and, and yeah, people will buy it. Yay! But foil on the cover. They'll buy it twice if you do that. But, you know, this story actually has a lot of characterization. I went back and read uh, Death of uh, Wolverine number one to, to read this one. And, you know, the opening moments of Death number one is that Wolverine is seconds away from his death and we just don't know who did it. And it's very intriguing. It's very powerful. There's a lot of interesting things that they do with captions in this. But this issue is mainly that Wolverine has figured out there's a bounty against him and it comes from Viper. And so he tries to sell an Iron Man helmet to Viper, uses the Iron Man helmet as a bomb in a fight with Sabretooth, and it's great character moments, great little appearance by uh, Kitty Pride. There's the thing that makes this distinct from other events, other things that Marvel has tried to do, other death events. There is a great worry for Wolverine. I actually am worried about him. We know he's going to die. We know it's going to happen. And this is like his last ride. It's really cool. And then the art by Stephen McNiven is perfect. This is actually, surprisingly, a buy it. Edge of Spider-Verse number one. Spider-Man Noir leads this adventure as he faces off against a Mysterio, who's very much like Harry Houdini, that gives this book the flavor of the old classic title, Sandman Mystery Theater. It is a great one-and-done storyline, especially when the Superior Spider-Man shows up, and it ties into the previous Superior Spider-Man number 32, another Spider-Verse tie-in. If all of the Spider-Verse tie-ins are going to be like this, this is going to be a great event. Buy it. And now for a quick scheduled interruption. I want to thank Bob Zanub, who says himself he reads over 500 collected editions a year for donating to my Patreon. If you would like to get a shout-out like Bob Zanub in an episode of Jason Reads Comics, go to patreon.com slash jawman. Now back to the comic book reviews. Fantastic Four number 10. We learned the tragic fate of She-Thing, an old forgotten Fantastic Four character that's really kind of cool that she meets Ben Grimm in prison. We also get Reed Richards being attacked by a bunch of Fantastic Four villains being saved by the Scarlet Witch, but honestly this issue feels really thin. There doesn't feel like there's enough development or forward momentum to justify this being 20 pages and to justify this being $4. So I'm going to say this is a skip it. Hawkeye number 20, give Kate Bishop her own book. Seriously, she deserves it. She's really cool and kick-ass in this book, and how great would it be to give another female Marvel character her own book? Just call it Kate Bishop Hawkeye. Boom. Sold. You signed me up. I've also sold you 5,000 more copies right there, Marvel. Get on it. This fun little detective issue uh, where she fights Madame Mask and has a lot of cool heroics and finds out her dad is in on the thing was perfect. Great art. Buy this book. Marvel, make Kate Bishop a book. Or give her a book. You got it. Call me. Inhumans number five. I love the Inhumans. I think they're a great concept. I cannot wait until the Marvel movie happens. I thought Inhumanity was great and the end of Infinity where lots of people become Inhumans was great. I didn't think this issue was great though. And I could 
struggle right now to tell you what this issue was about or what was even going on in this issue or why I should even care about the characters. And that's what you need with the Inhumans. You really need a strong in with the Inhumans or else you're lost and they become weird Kirby cosmic characters. But Ryan Stegman's art in this issue was great. And if you're a fan of his art, you should check it out. But uh, for everybody else, you should skip this issue. Magneto number nine. Magneto goes to Genosa and fights the Red Skull. That's all that happens in this issue. And that's all that needs to be said about this issue because it's a tie-in to Axis. But you know what? It's Magneto. He's got a cool black costume. And he's fighting the Red Skull. What else do you need? Buy it. Miss Marvel number eight. A lovely little story where Miss Marvel meets Lockjaw, the inhuman teleportation dog. And you know what? It's fun, and it's got a lot of heart, and there's a nice solid adventure, and there's some threats to Kamala Khan that makes you feel like her life is actually in danger. And Lockjaw is just 100% cute. This issue is a definite buy it. Nightcrawler number six. Nightcrawler and Rico, a mutant who looks like a scorpion, fight a generic, almost looks like the Red Skull looking villain uh, to save some hostages. And that's basically all this issue is, just wrapped up with some great Todd the Nuck art. And as great as Todd the Nuck's art is, it's not great enough to justify this issue where basically nothing happens except Nightcrawler just fights some people and rescues some hostages. Yay, skip it. X-Force number nine. In some very stiff looking art, Cable and his team fight a rainbow. And that's basically all that happens in this issue, except for finding out that some bugs are falling around all the mutants of the Marvel Universe. Okay, I guess that's a big deal. I don't know. But we've had two Marvel issues, both about mutants, that have basically been nothing but fights. So this one, again, is a skip it. And that's all the Marvel Now comics that were published. On September 10th, as always, go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic books, they know you love comic books, and we do too. They have a costume contest for Halloween. You can win an iPad, go over there, and win it. As always, I have a podcast called Geek History Lesson. You can find that on Stitcher and iTunes. Go please rate and review. And if you want your name shouted out during a future episode of Jason Reed's Comics, just go to patreon.com slash Jowen, and there's lots of other cool prizes. Let me know in the comments what you thought about my reviews, and tell me what you think I should review next week. I am going to do a full review of Death of the Wolverine at the end of this month. So don't suggest that, because it's already coming to you. And, you know, suggest something else. It's cool and stuff, right? Yeah. There we go. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to comment below and subscribe. As always, I'm Jason Inman. Be seeing you. This one is the Romulan bow. I'm a Romulan. I'm a Romulan. I'm a Romulan. Klingon block. Pla. Ka. Pla. The Vulcan dodge.